I was saying, okay, I'm going to solve the gesture first and this and this. I just started painting and just saying, these are the problems that I need to solve. And so my solution is sort of the way that I would solve the problem. Um, and I don't have an elegant way to walk through it, but here's my solutions. Um, so starting hey, off with the con- You weren't kidding. Con- <laughs> so starting off with the, it's a messy, a messy layer stack because I'm just like messing around. Um, but you know, the big thing, the first thing is the concept and I need to get the viewer to be able to see that something is happening with this mailbox and separate her from the mailbox. So now I need to move uh, the mailbox to the side so I can get a clear read on that silhouette. So that's the most important thing is like, now I have a side view of her. I've got a cheated view. If you guys know what cheated view is, like if this was really in perspective, it would be turned a little more, but you can always kind of rotate things a little bit more towards camera. They do that in movies and they do that on in TV and you know, it's called just cheating. Um, you don't have to always stick with a perspective. I kind of turned it a little bit more to face us uh, based on the perspective in here, but I really needed a silhouette view because I really needed this moment to happen in silhouette uh, first. And so that's like my main thing is getting the silhouette of what's happened, what the girl's doing. The second thing is I need some kind of concept here. So right now, I mean, she could over here, she could be mailing a, a, a utility bill like she's mailing in her gas bill <laughs> <laughs> not very interesting right and so you know you got you'd have to really come up with what is going to be that concept but i thought you know what if she's carrying a picture of her grandma maybe her grandma passed away and and, and maybe this is a magic mailbox that she's going to somehow get a reply back to from her grandmother so you know it's just again there's a million ways to start to come up with what is this person mailing and why is she mailing it and who's she mailing it to? Um, I just came up with that just off the top of my head, but I just gave her a reason to mail it. And then I gave her a history. So if, if she's holding a picture that somebody in her family, um, you know, the viewer may not even know that, but there's some, you'll know that there's some reason she's holding that picture and mailing the letter. Hopefully there'll be some kind of connection there. So give her a reason to mail it. Um, and then I thought, you know, you started to go, or the, this artist started to kind of have this sort of ramshackle details and stuff around. I saw this one plant here, but I thought, well, there's our way to get some life into this. Cause right now this one, this one to me feels a little bit stagnant. Uh, it feels lonely. Um, and I still think you can have this sort of lonely feel quiet kind of feel, but I just started ramping up like a little bit of the foliage. Cause I was thinking like, maybe this is an overgrown, old again i started thinking like a miyazaki film or something like that you come across this like old Mm -hmm. kind of deserted town you find this mailbox and somehow you're able to correspond with somebody that's gone or that's not around anymore and i thought that was just a cool thing so i started giving it a history i give it a past with the picture i give it a future with the mailing of the letter and then now the audience has to do that work um the dog right now is passive in this one i wanted to i mean the dog's not part of the scene per se but again the sight line where's he looking he's looking straight at the letter um even up top like i needed to activate this space so i brought down basic graphic design elements coming down into the scene by by bringing some of this stuff down here and then i added it looks like a rubber ducky i don't even know what that is a bird (laughs) he's also looking at the letter um, so I'm just always whoa, trying to, always trying to reinforce my focal point, um, and build on that focal point, you know, just as I work, I was just copying things or whatever. And I just wondered if maybe there's even a better scene by cropping in like this. I love having here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I love having the dog almost like an unexpected cropping of the dog over here. So it doesn't mm-hmm. look so formally composed, Um, almost looks like a snapshot in a weird way. If we zoom in like that, I really like that. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, a compositional element that I use quite a bit. I'm going to switch colors because it's hard to see. Um, I do this thing and I, I, I I don't know if anybody else does this. I've never seen it anywhere, but basically if you draw from corner to corner and then if you make a 90 degree line off of the other corners, it's a really wonderful place to put focal points. And so that's right. sort of my general idea. Most of the time that'll sort of give you that even rule of thirds. But as you start to get really a lot wider, you start to get this really, in my opinion, interesting layout, which I did. I've this never layout. seen that before. That's cool. 
it's nice, especially if you got like a skateboard or something like a really wide layout, it mm -hmm. puts your focal point way over here to the, to the sort of the side. Um, and I like it a, a little bit better than like, if this long format you're using rule of thirds, the boat would be here. Not that it makes a ton of difference, but I just find it to be a little more satisfying, but I always pay attention to where that shape is going, even if I don't end up totally using it. So, um, so that's my solution.